Welcome to Sunday night candlelight service. I like thinking about things that require us to calm ourselves. I like thinking about those things that remind us to meditate, to think in a different way, to ponder, to consider, to slow down and not be so wound up in hype that we forget what type of God we serve. Peter writes, Be ye holy, for he is holy, as it is written. And I often think that maybe we can't in America. Maybe we don't know what holiness really is. Maybe it's so far removed from the East that here in the West we have to create our own form of holiness because we can't address the fact of what God, who is holy, is all about. Reality Check often tells us to look at the holiness movement and say, well, no, because there's so much about them that they've gotten it wrong by feeling so holy they forgot what God is. God is love, and that's something that should mandate everything we talk about and everything we regard God about, that the baseline nature of God himself is love, not holiness. Oftentimes, we, because of our religious upbringing or our religious life, we think of holy as being giant cathedrals that were created not just for God, but also so that the air could be moved freely from where we exhale, it rises, and that the sunlight could come in and stream and cause these cathedrals to have adequate ventilation, proper sunlight, and also create an air of majesty, supremacy, deity. But I admit, being from a Western culture mindset, when I walk into a cathedral, I think this obviously is holy. But is it? We take our mindset sometimes from the temple in Jerusalem when we go, oh, wow, like the disciples with Jesus walking into the house of prayer designed after the tabernacle. But really, the temple in Jerusalem was not what is there in heaven. The temple in Jerusalem was designed after what the tabernacle that God said to make was a reality of what God said we should have for a place of worship or a place to meet with God. You see, the tabernacle was called a tent of meeting to meet God one to one. The temple in Jerusalem was not called a temple of meeting, but a house of prayer. For my house shall be called a house of prayer. So when Jesus is walking into Jerusalem, riding in on the donkey, and then is there in Jerusalem with his disciples assembled around him, and they are in awe of the gold overleaf that caused the temple itself to shine in the light, that the marble that was so taken from Jerusalem marble that the pillars themselves would seem to glow, that the entire building and structure was such that it was the greatest archaeological event that man could create to cause people to think about God or to honor God in some way through this measure of holiness, Jesus said, look, do you see this temple? In three days, you know, it will be destroyed and it will be remade. And he was speaking of himself, but also he spoke of the temple that was there in Jerusalem. That King Herod had finished and added so much more than Zerubbabel's temple. He had caused it to become a wonder, even like similar to Solomon's temple. A building, a structure, a wonder of the world. But is that holiness? Not really. You see, Jesus said, do you see these stones? Not one stone will be left unturned. Every one of them would be taken down, torn apart. Because what would happen was that by an error, by an accident, 
while there was a siege going on of Rome during the time of the rebellion of Israel against the Roman occupation and the Roman rule in 70 AD, there would be an arrow that would fly to the temple and it would hit something that was consumable by flame. And being as old as it was, being as archaic as it was, being as long as it had been there, immediately caught fire and the temple burned. And it burned to the ground. Literally all the stones that were there had caused the gold flake, the gold lining to crawl down into the cracks of the temple itself. The house of prayer, the house of God was burning and consumed by a great fire. And the gold that had been there had been burnt into the cracks. And so when Rome came into the temple after conquering and sacking Jerusalem, they took levers and slaves and pulled apart the very stones themselves and brought the building down to scrape off the gold and to take it back to Rome. Because you see, gold is pliable, it's malleable, it's easily moved around. Is that what holiness is? A building that could be destroyed by foreign invaders? Is that what you think of as holy? We're told in heaven that the angels cry out, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was, who is, and is to come. When I think of heaven, and I think of holiness, my mind is transferred to the tabernacle, not the temple. I think of the tabernacle and the way it was designed. There were memory objects that were inside of that tent of meeting. There was dead badger skins on the outside that remind us that we in our body ourselves are not temples of the Holy Spirit, we are tabernacles of the Holy Spirit. We are carcasses that are reckoned dead. Dead flesh, dead skin, dead works of the flesh. Because you see, while I walk around in this world, inside of me, there is that which is holy. And he is called the Holy Spirit. You see, he is the one that is holy. I am not. That with which is in the tabernacle as it was transported through the wilderness, would be set up, would be contained inside the Ark of the Covenant, the very box, as it were, that inside were memorials to remember what God had done with the children of Israel. Those things that would cause them to remember that God is God and man is not. And that when you went into the tabernacle, you could see the pillar of fire by day, or by, by night, and the smoke that rose from it by day. <clears throat> and the high priest would go in, in his ornaments, and do the duty, as it were, to do that religious observation of giving God credit and thanks for sparing them from Egypt and causing them to travel through the desert without starving the manna from heaven that God had provided for them. That God had provided something to eat, something to drink, something to wear. That God was there providing for His own people. And that's not holiness, that's love. But you see, in the presence of God is the Holy Spirit. Because what makes a person holy isn't that with, which is with outside of Him, but that which makes us holy is what comes inside of us. The ep is that which was his mouth side, but the eme, or the vice versa, whichever ep and eme is, of the Greek is that with which is on the inside. Because you cannot be holy simply by being religious. You cannot be holy even if you were perfect on the outside, because God is what makes us holy. Being holy means that with which is gone inside of us to change us and arrange our lifestyle in, inside that we should become spiritual, that we should become likened unto God Himself, not gods as some religious teachers will teach you, like Mormons or Jehovah's Witnesses or other cults, but rather to have the nature of God inside of us, that Holy Spirit, that would show us what holiness is. Because I can tell you what holiness is, and it has nothing to do with being religious. It has nothing to do with being so awestruck by the omnipotence, omniscience, or omnipresence of God. Though that may make us feel holy, it is not what holiness is. Holiness is simple. 
Holiness is God Himself in us. Holiness is that Spirit of God that comes within us and dwells inside of our heart. Holiness is that with which causes us to change our inward side to become born again, not from below, which is what we are born of, the dust and the dust shall we return, but born from above, which comes down from God Himself that causes the breath of life to exist in us, that He causes the Spirit to come within us so that we would be born of the Spirit and have the Spirit of God, the Spirit of holiness within us, that we should not be holy by our outward actions, but holy inside, holy and complete, holy unto God. For that is what the message of the Holy Spirit is in creating holiness within us. It is not that we can make ourselves holy. We cannot. We can ask God to come within us. We can ask God to cause us to be born again. We can say, God, I am a man undone. I cannot stand in the presence of God and live. Help me. And we see the angel go to the brazier or the coals that are by the very presence of God and take one and put it to John's lips and cause him to be holy temporarily. But you see, we have something more excellent in these latter days. We have something more personal and real. Someone who is so intimate and someone, not something, that is so tender that the very nature of himself is God. And that is love, peace, joy. You see, God is love. But the peace of God that comes within us comes from the Holy Spirit. The joy of the Lord that isn't something that's external to see on the outside, jumping up and down and getting excited and rolling on the ground and playing like some kind of foreign object to God himself, but rather it's that nature that comes with inside that goes and causes a stillness, a peace, a love so overwhelming that the joy of the Lord is just so fulfilling that you don't have to do anything. You don't have to speak. You don't have to breathe. You don't have to do one thing at all except to be. You see, when God said, I am, he didn't say his name was I am. He said, I am a state of being. I am love. I am so existential beyond what you can comprehend that I can't even give you a name to what I am. You could not exist in the purity of what I am because I am holy. And that with which exists within my realm must be holy must be complete, must be love manifest, love invested, love that divests itself from the inside out, that even the very words themselves would come out as holy. That the very nature of the person that is filled with the Holy Spirit would be peace itself, that would be joy contained, that would be the love springing forth like an artesian well. And the nature of Jesus, just the very presence of himself without saying a word, caused people to recognize, surely this is God. For what else could this be? A man? Of course not. For we see what men are like all around us. We see what men act like, what men talk like, what men are. But when we see God manifested in the flesh, oh, you're taken back. You step back. Even as the guards came to take him and he said, Who are you? I am. Boom! Fall back. Because holiness does that to you. It causes you to be taken back. You realize you can't be in the presence of God and live. Because you are unholy. So we find in our study of holiness on Sunday night by candlelight that we're not holy. We're more like a wax candle, consumed by the holiness of God, even as you can see that this candle itself, the light is here, and that's the holiness. The wick is you and I, and the wax is what barely keeps us alive, the nature of the Holy Spirit within us. We're waxing old. We're burning up. We're being consumed. Sooner or later, we must be filled and overflowing with the oil of God's presence, the oil that is God himself in us. Don't get caught up on presence with the holiness movement or if God's presence is here. God is not a presence. God is a person. 
God has always been a person, and God will reveal him to himself to you as a person. Way beyond anything you'll comprehend or understand. But to understand God, look at Jesus. To understand and comprehend how Jesus could be the manifestation of holiness, simply look at what he did when he came out of baptism filled with the Holy Spirit. He was driven into the desert to be tempted of the devil. And yet for 40 days he did neither eat nor drank. So don't let some wacko messianic or person lie to you about the scriptures. He didn't eat, he didn't drink. It wasn't some mini fast that somebody can imitate. No, it was miraculous supernatural of the nature of what God is, which is not super, but normal for what he can do as creator of the universe, to maintain life, to be life, who is life. And that's how we have to be. No longer living after our flesh, eating and drinking and putting on clothes and looking what we are to pretend that we're holy and, oh God, I'm holy, oh, holy, holy, holy. But rather inside, crying out, God, Make me holy, for I am a sinner and I am undone. Cleanse me from within. Create in me a clean heart. And renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy spirit, O God. Take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. O God, renew a right spirit within me. Make me holy for I am not. Hear my cry, O God. Attend unto my prayer. From the ends of the earth I cry unto thee. God, make me 